Let's be honest, typing is a pretty fundamental skill on the iPhone. And while I can't magically make you a better typist, I can share all the tips that I know about typing on the iPhone. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. More than 20 tips and tricks, all related to typing on your iPhone. Okay, let's get into it. If you've written some text and you decide that you'd like to rearrange it, the easiest way to do it is to select the text, then tap and hold on the selected text. This lifts it from your screen and you can then move it around. So in this example, I've grabbed some text from lower down in the notes and I can then move it up to the top and just drop it where I want it to go. This also works across apps. So if you've maybe drafted out an email in the notes app and you then decide that you want to take a portion of it and put it into mail, just repeat the process. But this time swipe up to come out of notes, then open mail and drop it right into your email. If you press and hold on a letter on the keyboard, you can access different accents for that letter. So for example, if I do that with the letter E, you can see that there are loads to choose from, meaning that if I need to type words and languages other than my main language, I can easily do that. This works for lots of letters on the keyboard, but there are some other handy ones that you might not know about. For example, if you do this on the zero key, you can access the degree symbol. If you do this on the currency icon, which is the pound sign for me, it gives you other common currency symbols. If you do this on the hyphen key, you can choose from different sizes, including a dot. Have you ever watched a tips video and thought, how am I supposed to remember all this? If that sounds familiar, you'll want to check out my new training portal, iPhone Essentials Plus. It features over 100 iPhone tips, with another 100 on the way in the coming weeks, covering everything that you need to know about your iPhone. Each module is packed with lessons, including tutorial videos, step-by-step -step guides with screenshots and downloadable PDFs. So whether you prefer watching, reading or hands-on learning, there's something for you. You can follow the lessons in order or dive into the topics that you're most interested in. Best of all, it's completely ad-free with no sponsors or monthly subscriptions, just one payment for lifetime access to all content, including all future updates. If you're interested, scan the QR code on screen or click the link in the description to find out more. If you struggle with the keyboard on your phone being too small, a quick and easy way to fix this is to head into settings, then scroll down to display and brightness, and then scroll all the way to the bottom and tap into display zoom. Change this from default to larger text. Choose done and accept the confirmation message that appears. This will make all text on your iPhone larger, but more importantly, it will significantly increase the size of your keyboard. If you find it hard to read the text as you're typing it on the screen, you might benefit from a feature called Zoom. Head into Settings, then Accessibility, and in the Vision section, choose Zoom. Toggle this on. Also make sure that Follow Focus and Smart Typing are both enabled. Then next time you're typing out a message or an email or whatever, you can double tap the screen with three fingers to zoom in, making the text that you type much easier to see. You can use two fingers to drag the window around, and that means that you can still access the keyboard. Double tap with three fingers when you want to return back to normal, and you can of course disable this feature at any time if you like by repeating the steps. If you're typing something into your phone and realize that you need to perform a calculation, you can do it from right within the thing that you're typing. So in this example, I've got the total cost of a hotel and I've realized that I need to divide it by three. So I can type the sum out in the text and you can see that as soon as I input the equal sign, my phone knows that I wanna figure out a calculation. In the menu bar above the keyboard, the option on the left lets me write out the sum and the equal sign as written, but without calculating it. If I choose the option in the center, it will write out the calculation complete with the answer. If I choose the option on the right, it will just input the answer and not the calculation. If you prefer the feel of a real keyboard when typing, consider enabling haptics. Open settings, scroll down to sounds and haptics, and then tap into keyboard feedback. Ensure that haptic is enabled. Now when you type, your screen will vibrate a little, emulating the feel of a real keyboard. This does use up a bit more of your battery than having it disabled, but you might find the trade-off worth it. Your phone can suggest a suitable emoji for when you're typing, displaying it in the menu bar above your keyboard. For this to work, you have to go into settings, then general, then keyboard, and ensure that predictive text is enabled. Then next time you're typing, if you say something that could generate an emoji, like the phrase, let's grab a beer after work, for example, you might see a beer emoji after you type it. 
tap on this to input it. Also, a recent addition to iOS is the ability to input emoji when you're dictating. You would just say the name of the emoji. So for example, if I want to input the one where it's a smiling face with love hearts, I would say something like, hey, just wanted to check that you're doing okay, smiling face with hearts emoji. My phone recognizes that I'm trying to input the emoji. Now for this to work, you'll need to know the exact name of the emoji. And you can find that by going to unicode.org, find the emoji that you want and look for the short name. This does work better with some emojis as opposed to others. But if you like to use dictation and emojis, you should definitely give this a go. On the subject of emojis, if your phone supports Apple intelligence, you can create your own. Tap the emoji button in the bottom left, and then in the search box that says describe an emoji, you can type in any idea that you might have for an emoji. Then press the little emoji icon with a plus symbol to the right, and your phone will do its best to create something suitable. If you like it, you can just add it right into your text. When typing, I'm sure you already know that you can double tap the shift button to enter caps lock mode. You can then type in all capitals and you just tap the shift button when you're done to return to normal. But if you want an alternative method of all caps, you can just tap and hold the shift button with one hand and then use the other hand to type. Typing is slower this way, but if you need to jump in and out of caps lock quickly, this can be pretty useful. On the topic of typing with one hand, you can quickly enable and disable one-handed keyboard for both your left and right hand. To do this, tap and hold on the emoji icon in the lower left corner of the keyboard. You can choose the option on the left for the left-handed keyboard or the option on the right for the right-handed keyboard or switch back to the normal keyboard by tapping the option in the center. Whichever option you choose, the keyboard will shift over to one side, making it much easier to type with one hand. Oh, and a related tip, if you go to settings, then accessibility, then scroll down to touch, you can enable an option in here called reachability. With this enabled, just swipe down in the bottom section of your iPhone and the whole screen will drop down. This makes it really easy to operate your iPhone with one hand. Your iPhone has a swipe type feature that a lot of people I speak to still have no idea about. It's a bit of an acquired taste, but if you've never used it, you should definitely try it out. Ensure that this feature works for you by going to settings, then general, then keyboard, and ensuring that slide to type is enabled. Then when you're typing anything out, you can start on the first letter of the word that you want to type and simply slide your thumb or finger around to touch all of the letters in your word. Then lift off of the keyboard at the end of each word. Your phone will intelligently figure out what you're trying to type and input the word for you. This one does take practice, but it's definitely worth trying if you've never used it before. This tip is relevant if you use other Apple items like an iPad or a Mac computer. Ensure that you make use of Universal Clipboard. So long as all of your devices are signed into your iCloud account and are all connected to the same Wi-Fi network, you can copy and paste from one device to another. So for example, the other day, I had a customer service message from my bank that I had to reply to, and it was pretty lengthy. So I wrote the reply out using my computer keyboard on my Mac, then selected it, copied it, and pasted it right into my banking app. Oh, and on a related note, you can use Bluetooth keyboards with your iPhone, which might sound crazy, but if you need to get some serious typing done, and the only computer that you have with you is your iPhone, it's actually not that crazy. Just go to settings and Bluetooth, and connect the keyboard just like you would if you were connecting it to your Mac. You can then type away with a full-sized keyboard and just disconnect it when you're done to get back to normal. Text replacement is another old tip, but it's a game changer if you've never used it before. Go to settings, then general, then keyboard, then text replacement. Tap the plus button in the upper right to create a new replacement. In the phrase field, tap out the full text that you want to be input each time that you run this shortcut. You can even copy and paste in here from other apps if you want. Then in the shortcut field, input the phrase that you'd like to input to have the shortcut run. So in this example, I've written a thank you message and that's gonna trigger when I type the phrase TYVM. Tap save and you're done. Now, each time that you type that phrase out, your iPhone will immediately replace it for you. This one's also a bit of a classic, but it would be remiss of me not to mention it in a video all about typing on the iPhone. You can create a trackpad on screen to accurately drop your cursor anywhere in a passage of text. Simply tap and hold on the space bar, then move your thumb or finger around to move the cursor and let go when you want to drop it. 
The great thing is that the entire screen becomes a trackpad when you do this, so you can be really accurate. Also, if you want to use this method to select text, follow the same steps to move your cursor to the beginning of the text that you want to select. Then with your finger or thumb still pressed down, tap with another finger or thumb anywhere on the screen. You might not notice it, but this has switched your cursor to select mode. Now move your original finger or thumb and you can see that you'll begin selecting text. Do this until you've selected the text that you want and you can then copy or cut it like you usually would. If you wanna select text on your phone, there's a few shortcuts that you should know about. Tap once to drop your cursor into a specific point in a passage of text. Double tap on a word to select the word that you've just double tapped on. Triple tap on a word to select the entire paragraph that the word is contained within. Oh, and I'm sure you know about the regular menu options like being able to copy and paste, but here's one that you might not know. If you select a word or a line of text in an email, in the contextual menu that appears, there's an option called add link. If you tap on this, you can input a link to a web page, meaning that the text that you create is clickable by the person that you're sending the email to. If you've written out some text, you can tap the AA button to format that text, which includes being able to turn your text into bullet points. When you've created your bullet, you can swipe from left to right on a bullet to increase its indentation or right to left to decrease its indentation. This works for number bullets as well, giving you a decent amount of control over how your text looks. I'm sure you already know that the delete key will, well, delete your text. If you have a lot of text that you wanna delete quickly, just hold the delete key down. It will begin by deleting letters at a time, but the longer you hold it down, the more it will delete, moving on to whole words. This makes it really quick and easy to get rid of an entire passage of text if you need to. If you have a primary language, but then maybe speak a second language, you might benefit from enabling the bilingual keyboard feature. So to do this, open settings, then choose general, then keyboard, and tap on keyboard at the top of the screen. Choose add new keyboard, then search for the one that you want. When you select it, you'll have the option to add it as a new keyboard or add it in addition to the one that you already have. Choose that option. Now, when you return to your keyboard, you'll see a symbol in the space bar letting you know that you've got a bilingual keyboard. The change will be represented when you try to spell out words in either language. And if you've got predictive text, you'll get options for both languages in the bar above your keyboard. Oftentimes, if you select a word in the secondary language, the keyboard will change to reflect this. A quick tip related to the bilingual keyboard. Did you know that if you press and hold the period button when you're in a field that's relevant to domain names, like the address bar of Safari or the email field in Mail, you can quickly input a domain extension. And the cool thing about this is that as well as the usuals like .com or .org, it will also include ones relevant to any additional keyboards that you've selected. Your phone will try to intelligently learn when to autocorrect words for you and when not to, but it can get this wrong. And there might be a situation where you'd prefer to reset your iPhone's dictionary back to factory default to stop these autocorrects from happening. It's really easy to do this. Go to settings, then choose general, then transfer or reset iPhone. Choose reset, then choose reset keyboard dictionary. Confirm with your passcode and your phone's dictionary will be reset back to factory settings. The final tip is for anyone who really can't get on board with the built-in keyboard. And I know that there are a lot of you out there. Check out a third-party keyboard. Go to the app store, tap search and input keyboard. Then choose from any of the available options. The only thing I'd say here is exercise caution. The app store is generally a pretty safe place, but a third party keyboard is literally an app that has the ability to track what you type. So I definitely recommend only installing ones from trusted third party developers. Gboard is a popular one. So is the one from Grammarly, SwiftKey is popular too. In fact, if you recommend a good third party keyboard, leave it in the comments. So there you go. Those are all the tips and tricks that I know when it comes to typing on the iPhone. Hopefully there are at least a couple of things in here that you didn't know. Any tips that you felt should have been included? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.